The Battle of Okinawa Japanese, Chong Zan Hepburn, Okinawa Sen Okinawan, Chong Zan Translate. Uchina Ikusa, codenamed Operation Iceberg, was a major battle of the Pacific War fought on the island of Okinawa by United States Marine and Army forces against the Imperial Japanese Army. The initial invasion of Okinawa on April 1, 1945, was the largest amphibious assault in the Pacific theater of World War II. The 82-day battle lasted from April 1 until June 22, 1945. After a long campaign of island hopping, the Allies were planning to use Kadena Air Base on the large island of Okinawa as a base for Operation Downfall, the planned invasion of the Japanese home islands, 340 miles 550 kilometers away. The United States created the 10th Army, a cross-branch force consisting of the 7th, 27th, 77th, and 96th Infantry Divisions of the U.S. Army with the 1st, 2nd, and 6th Divisions of the Marine Corps, to fight on the island. The 10th was unique in that it had its own tactical air force Joint Army Marine Command, and was also supported by combined naval and amphibious forces. The battle has been referred to as the Typhoon of Steel in English, and Tetsu no Aim, Rain of Steel, or Tetsu no Bofu, Violent Wind of Steel, in Japanese. The nicknames refer to the ferocity of the fighting, the intensity of Japanese kamikaze attacks, and the sheer numbers of Allied ships and armored vehicles that assaulted the island. The battle was one of the bloodiest in the Pacific, with approximately 160,000 casualties on both sides, at least 75,000 Allied and 84,166 to 117,000 Japanese, including drafted Okinawans wearing Japanese uniforms. 149,425 Okinawans were killed, committed suicide, or went missing, a significant proportion of the estimated pre war 300,000 local population. In the naval operations surrounding the battle, both sides lost considerable numbers of ships and aircraft, including the Japanese battleship Yamato. After the battle, Okinawa provided a fleet anchorage, troop staging areas, and airfields in proximity to Japan in preparation for the planned invasion. <laughs> <laughs> Order of battle <laughs> <laughs> Allied In all, the army had over 102,000 soldiers of these, 38,000 plus were non-divisional artillery, combat support and HQ troops, with another 9,000 service troops, over 88,000 marines and 18,000 navy personnel mostly Seabees and medical personnel. At the start of the Battle of Okinawa, the 10th Army had 182,821 personnel under its command. It was planned that General Buckner would report to Turner until the amphibious phase was completed, after which he would report directly to Spruance. Although Allied land forces were entirely composed of American units, the British Pacific Fleet BPF, known to the U.S. Navy as Task Force 57, provided about one quarter of Allied naval air power 450 planes. It comprised a force which included 50 warships, of which 17 were aircraft carriers, while the British armoured flight decks meant that fewer planes could be carried in a single aircraft carrier, they were more resistant to kamikaze strikes. Although all the BPF aircraft carriers were provided by Britain, the carrier group was a combined British Commonwealth fleet with, Australian, New Zealand and Canadian, ships and personnel. Their mission was to neutralize Japanese airfields in the Sakishima Islands and provide air cover against Japanese kamikaze attacks. Most of the air-to-air -air fighters and the small dive bombers and strike aircraft were U.S. Navy carrier-based airplanes. Japanese <inaudible> 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 The Japanese land campaign mainly defensive was conducted by the 67,000 strong 77,000 according to some sources regular 32nd Army and some 9,000 Imperial Japanese Navy IJN troops at Oroku Naval Base only a few hundred of whom had been trained and equipped for ground combat, supported by 39,000 drafted local Ryukyuan people including 24,000 hastily drafted rear militia called Boatai and 15,000 non-uniformed laborers. The Japanese had used kamikaze tactics since the Battle of Leyte Gulf, but for the first time, they became a major part of the defense. Between the American landing on April 1 and May 25, seven major kamikaze attacks were attempted, involving more than 1,500 planes. 
The 32nd Army initially consisted of the 9th, 24th, and 62nd Divisions, and the 44th Independent Mixed Brigade. The 9th Division was moved to Taiwan before the invasion, resulting in shuffling of Japanese defensive plans. Primary resistance was to be led in the south by Lieutenant General Mitsuru Ushijima, his Chief of Staff, Lieutenant General Isamu Cho and his Chief of Operations, Colonel Hiromichi Yahara. Yahara advocated a defensive strategy, whilst Cho advocated an offensive one. In the north, Colonel Takihito Udo was in command. The IJN troops were led by Rear Admiral Minoru Oda. They expected the Americans to land six to ten divisions against the Japanese garrison of two and a half divisions. The staff calculated that superior quality and numbers of weapons gave each U.S. division five or six times the firepower of a Japanese division. To this, would be added the Americans' abundant naval and air firepower. Topic. Military use of children In Okinawa Island, middle school boys were organized into frontline service Teketsu Kinotai, while Haimuri students were organized into a nursing unit. The Japanese Imperial Army mobilized 1,780 middle school boys aged 14 to 17 years into frontline service. They were named Teketsu Kinotai, Ya, Ji Shui Chin Huang Dui Iron and Blood Imperial Corps. This mobilization was conducted by the ordinance of the Ministry of Army, not by law. The ordinances mobilized the student as a volunteer soldier for form's sake. In reality, the military authorities ordered schools to force almost all students to volunteer as soldiers. Sometimes they counterfeited the necessary documents. About half of Teketsu Kinotai were killed, including in suicide bomb attacks against tanks, and in guerrilla operations. After losing the Battle of Okinawa, the Japanese government enacted new laws in preparation for the decisive battles in the main islands. These laws made it possible for boys aged 15 or older and girls aged 17 or older to be drafted into frontline service. <laughs> <laughs> Naval battle The United States Navy's Task Force 58, deployed to the east of Okinawa with a picket group of from six to eight destroyers, kept 13 carriers seven CVs and six CVLs on duty from March 23 to April 27 and a smaller number thereafter. Until April 27, a minimum of 14 and up to 18 escort carriers CVEs were in the area at all times. Until April 20, British Task Force 57, with four large and six escort carriers, remained off the Sakashima Islands to protect the southern flank. The protracted length of the campaign under stressful conditions forced Admiral Chester W. Nimitz to take the unprecedented step of relieving the principal naval commanders to rest and recuperate. Following the practice of changing the fleet designation with the change of commanders, U.S. naval forces began the campaign as the U.S. Fifth Fleet under Admiral Raymond Spruance, but ended it as the Third Fleet under Admiral William Halsey. Japanese air opposition had been relatively light during the first few days after the landings. However, on April 6, the expected air reaction began with an attack by 400 planes from Kyushu. Periodic heavy air attacks continued through April. During the period March 26 to April 30, 20 American ships were sunk and 157 damaged by enemy action. For their part, by April 30, the Japanese had lost more than 1,100 planes to Allied naval forces alone. Between April 6 and June 22, the Japanese flew 1,465 kamikaze aircraft in large scale attacks from Kyushu, 185 individual kamikaze sorties from Kyushu, and 250 individual kamikaze sorties from Formosa. While U.S. intelligence estimated there were 89 planes on Formosa, the Japanese actually had about 700, dismantled or well camouflaged and dispersed into scattered villages and towns. The U.S. Fifth Air Force disputed Navy claims of kamikaze coming from Formosa. The ships lost were smaller vessels, particularly the destroyers of the radar pickets, as well as destroyer escorts and landing ships. While no major Allied warships were lost, several fleet carriers were severely damaged. Land-based Shinio-class suicide motorboats were also used in the Japanese suicide attacks, although Ushijima had disbanded the majority of the suicide boat battalions prior to the battle due to expected low effectiveness against a superior enemy. The boat crews were reformed into three additional infantry battalions. 
Operation Ten Go Operation Tengo Ten -go was the attempted attack by a strike force of ten Japanese surface vessels, led by the Yamato and commanded by Admiral Seichi Ito. This small task force had been ordered to fight through enemy naval forces, then beach Yamato and fight from shore, using her guns as coastal artillery and her crew as naval infantry. The Tengo force was spotted by submarines shortly after it left the Japanese home waters, and was intercepted by U.S. carrier aircraft. Under attack from more than 300 aircraft over a two-hour span, the world's largest battleship sank on April 7, 1945, after a one-sided battle. Long before she could reach Okinawa, U.S. torpedo bombers were instructed to aim for only one side to prevent effective counter-flooding by the battleship's crew, and to aim for the bow or the stern, where armor was believed to be the thinnest, of Yamato's screening force. The light cruiser Yahagi and four of the eight destroyers were also sunk. The Imperial Japanese Navy lost some 3,700 sailors, including Admiral Ito, at the cost of 10 U.S. aircraft and 12 airmen. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> British Pacific Fleet. The British Pacific Fleet, taking part as Task Force 57, was assigned the task of neutralizing the Japanese airfields in the Sakishima Islands, which it did successfully from March 26 to April 10. On April 10, its attention was shifted to airfields on northern Formosa. The force withdrew to San Pedro Bay on April 23. On May 1, the British Pacific Fleet returned to action, subduing the airfields as before, this time with naval bombardment as well as aircraft. Several kamikaze attacks caused significant damage, but since the British had armoured flight decks on their aircraft carriers, they experienced only a brief interruption to their forces' operations. Topic. Land battle The land battle took place over about 81 days beginning on April 1, 1945. The first Americans ashore were soldiers of the 77th Infantry Division, who landed in the Kurama Islands, 15 miles 24 kilometers west of Okinawa on March 26. Subsidiary landings followed, and the Kurama group was secured over the next five days. In these preliminary operations, the 77th Infantry Division suffered 27 dead and 81 wounded, while Japanese dead and captured numbered over 650. The operation provided a protected anchorage for the fleet and eliminated the threat from suicide boats. On March 31, Marines of the Fleet Marine Force Amphibious Reconnaissance Battalion landed without opposition on Kishima, four islets just 8 miles 13 kilometers west of the Okinawan capital of Naha. A group of 155 mm (6.1 in) long tom artillery pieces went ashore on the islets to cover operations on Okinawa. Topic: <laughs> Northern Okinawa. The main landing was made by the 24th Corps and the 3rd Amphibious Corps on the Hagyushi beaches on the western coast of Okinawa on L Day, April 1, which was both Easter Sunday and April Fool's Day in 1945. The 2nd Marine Division conducted a demonstration off the Minotoga beaches on the southeastern coast to deceive the Japanese about American intentions and delay movement of reserves from there. The 10th Army swept across the south-central part of the island with relative ease, capturing the Kadena and the Yamatan airbases within hours of the landing. In light of the weak opposition, General Buckner decided to proceed immediately with Phase 2 of his plan—the seizure of northern Okinawa. The 6th Marine Division headed up the Ishikawa Isthmus and by April 7, had sealed off the Motobu Peninsula. Six days later on April 13, the 2nd Battalion, 22nd Marine Regiment, reached Hito Point at the northernmost tip of the island. By this point, the bulk of the Japanese forces in the north codenamed Udo Force were cornered on the Motobu Peninsula. Here, the terrain was mountainous and wooded, with the Japanese defenses concentrated on Ye Dake, a twisted mass of rocky ridges and ravines on the center of the peninsula. There was heavy fighting before the Marines finally cleared Ye Dake on April 18. However, this was not the end of ground combat in northern Okinawa. On May 24, the Japanese mounted Operation Gigo. A company of Goretsu Kudatai commandos were airlifted in a suicide attack on Yamatan. They destroyed 70,000 U.S. gallons L of fuel and nine planes before being killed by the defenders, who lost two men. 
Meanwhile, the 77th Infantry Division assaulted IE Island IE Shima, a small island off the western end of the peninsula, on April 16. In addition to conventional hazards, the 77th Infantry Division encountered kamikaze attacks, and even local women armed with spears. There was heavy fighting before the area was declared secured on April 21, and became another air base for operations against Japan. Southern Okinawa While the 6th Marine Division cleared northern Okinawa, the U.S. Army 96th and 7th Infantry Divisions wheeled south across the narrow waste of Okinawa. The 96th Infantry Division began to encounter fierce resistance in west-central Okinawa from Japanese troops holding fortified positions east of Highway No. 1 and about 5 miles 8 kilometers northwest of Shuri, from what came to be known as Cactus Ridge. The 7th Infantry Division encountered similarly fierce Japanese opposition from a rocky pinnacle located about 1,000 yards 910 meters southwest of Arakachi later dubbed the Pinnacle. By the night of April 8, American troops had cleared these and several other strongly fortified positions. They suffered over 1,500 battle casualties in the process, while killing or capturing about 4,500 Japanese. Yet the battle had only begun, for it was now realized that these were merely outposts guarding the Shuri Line. The next American objective was Kakazu Ridge, two hills with a connecting saddle that formed part of Shuri's outer defenses. The Japanese had prepared their positions well and fought tenaciously. The Japanese soldiers hid in fortified caves. American forces often lost personnel before clearing the Japanese out from each cave or other hiding place. The Japanese sent Okinawans at gunpoint out to obtain water and supplies for them, which led to civilian casualties. The American advance was inexorable, but resulted in a high number of casualties on both sides. As the American assault against Kakazu Ridge stalled, Lt. Gen. Ushijima, influenced by Gen. Cho, decided to take the offensive. On the evening of April 12, the 32nd Army attacked American positions across the entire front. The Japanese attack was heavy, sustained, and well organized. After fierce close combat, the attackers retreated, only to repeat their offensive the following night. A final assault on April 14 was again repulsed. The effort led the 32nd Army's staff to conclude that the Americans were vulnerable to night infiltration tactics, but that their superior firepower made any offensive Japanese troop concentrations extremely dangerous, and they reverted to their defensive strategy. The 27th Infantry Division, which had landed on April 9, took over on the right, along the west coast of Okinawa. General John R. Hodge now had three divisions in the line, with the 96th in the middle, and the 7th to the east, with each division holding a front of only about 1.5 miles kilometers. Hodge launched a new offensive of April 19 with a barrage of 324 guns, the largest ever in the Pacific Ocean Theater. Battleships, cruisers, and destroyers joined the bombardment, which was followed by 650 Navy and Marine planes attacking the enemy positions with napalm, rockets, bombs, and machine guns. The Japanese defenses were sighted on reverse slopes, where the defenders waited out the artillery barrage and aerial attack in relative safety, emerging from the caves to rain mortar rounds and grenades upon the Americans advancing up the forward slope. A tank assault to achieve breakthrough by outflanking Kakazu Ridge failed to link up with its infantry support attempting to cross the ridge, and therefore failed with the loss of 22 tanks. Although flame tanks cleared many cave defenses, there was no breakthrough, and the 24th Corps suffered 720 casualties. The losses might have been greater except for the fact that the Japanese had practically all of their infantry reserves tied up farther south, held there by another feint off the Minotoga beaches by the 2nd Marine Division that coincided with the attack. At the end of April, after Army forces had pushed through the Makinado defensive line, the 1st Marine Division relieved the 27th Infantry Division, and the 77th Infantry Division relieved the 96th. When the 6th Marine Division arrived, the 3rd Amphibious Corps took over the right flank and the 10th Army assumed control of the battle. On May 4, the 32nd Army launched another counteroffensive. This time, Ushijima attempted to make amphibious assaults on the coasts behind American lines. To support his offensive, the Japanese artillery moved into the open. By doing so, they were able to fire 13,000 rounds in support, but effective American counter-battery fire destroyed dozens of Japanese artillery pieces. 
The attack failed. Buckner launched another American attack on May 11. Ten days of fierce fighting followed. On May 13, troops of the 96th Infantry Division and 763rd Tank Battalion captured Conical Hill. Rising 476 feet 145 meters above the Yonabaru coastal plain, this feature was the eastern anchor of the main Japanese defenses and was defended by about 1,000 Japanese. Meanwhile, on the opposite coast, the 1st and 6th Marine Divisions fought for Sugar Loaf Hill. The capture of these two key positions exposed the Japanese around Shuri on both sides. Buckner hoped to envelop Shuri and trap the main Japanese defending force. By the end of May, monsoon rains which had turned contested hills and roads into a morass exacerbated both the tactical and medical situations. The ground advance began to resemble a World War I battlefield, as troops became mired in mud, and flooded roads greatly inhibited evacuation of wounded to the rear. Troops lived on a field sodden by rain, part garbage dump and part graveyard. Unburied Japanese and American bodies decayed, sank in the mud, and became part of a noxious stew. Anyone sliding down the greasy slopes could easily find their pockets full of maggots at the end of the journey. On May 29, Major General Pedro del Valle, commander of the 1st Marine Division, ordered Captain Julian D. Dusenberry of Company A, 1st Battalion, 5th Marines, to capture Shuri Castle. Seizure of the castle represented both strategic and psychological blows for the Japanese and was a milestone in the campaign. Del Valle was awarded a Distinguished Service Medal for his leadership in the fight and the subsequent occupation and reorganization of Okinawa. Captain Dusenberry would later receive the Navy Cross for his actions. Shuri Castle had been shelled by the battleship USS Mississippi for three days before this advance. Due to this, the 32nd Army withdrew to the south and thus the Marines had an easy task of securing Shuri Castle. The castle, however, was outside the 1st Marine Division's assigned zone and only frantic efforts by the commander and staff of the 77th Infantry Division prevented an American air strike and artillery bombardment which would have resulted in many casualties due to friendly fire. The Japanese retreat, although harassed by artillery fire, was conducted with great skill at night and aided by the monsoon storms. The 32nd Army was able to move nearly 30,000 personnel into its last defense line on the Kian Peninsula, which ultimately led to the greatest slaughter on Okinawa in the latter stages of the battle, including the deaths of thousands of civilians. In addition, there were 9,000 IJN troops supported by 1,100 militia, with approximately 4,000 holed up at the underground headquarters on the hillside overlooking the Okinawa naval base in the Oroku Peninsula, east of the airfield. On June 4, elements of the 6th Marine Division launched an amphibious assault on the peninsula. The 4,000 Japanese sailors, including Admiral Minoru Oda, all committed suicide within the hand-built tunnels of the underground naval headquarters on June 13. By June 17, the remnants of Ushijima's shattered 32nd Army were pushed into a small pocket in the far south of the island to the southeast of Itaman. On June 18, General Buckner was killed by Japanese artillery fire while monitoring the progress of his troops from a forward observation post. Buckner was replaced by Roy Geiger. Upon assuming command, Geiger became the only U.S. Marine to command a numbered army of the U.S. Army in combat. He was relieved five days later by Joseph Stilwell. On June 19, General Claudius Miller Easley, the commander of the U.S. Army's 96th Infantry Division, was killed by Japanese machine gun fire, also while checking on the progress of his troops at the front. The last remnants of Japanese resistance ended on June 21, although some Japanese continued hiding, including the future governor of Okinawa Prefecture, Masahide Oda. Ushijima and Cho committed suicide by seppuku in their command headquarters on Hill 89 in the closing hours of the battle. Colonel Yahara had asked Ushijima for permission to commit suicide, but the general refused his request, saying, If you die there will be no one left who knows the truth about the Battle of Okinawa. Bear the temporary shame but endure it. This is an order from your army commander. Yahara was the most senior officer to have survived the battle on the island, and he later authored a book titled The Battle for Okinawa. On August 15, 1945, Admiral Matome Ugaki was killed while part of a kamikaze raid on a Heijima island. The official surrender ceremony was held on September 7, near Kadena Airfield. Casualties Okinawa was the bloodiest battle of the Pacific War. 
The most complete tally of deaths during the battle is at the Cornerstone of Peace Monument at the Okinawa Prefectural Peace Memorial Museum, which identifies the names of each individual who died at Okinawa in World War II. As of 2010, the monument lists 240,931 names, including 149,193 Okinawan civilians, 77,166 Imperial Japanese soldiers, 14,009 American soldiers, and smaller numbers of people from South Korea 365, the United Kingdom 82, North Korea 82, and Taiwan 34. .The numbers correspond to recorded deaths during the Battle of Okinawa from the time of the American landings in the Kurama Islands on March 26, 1945, to the signing of the Japanese surrender on September 2, 1945, in addition to all Okinawan casualties in the Pacific War in the 15 years from the Manchurian incident, along with those who died in Okinawa from war-related events in the year before the battle and the year after the surrender, 234,183 names were inscribed by the time of unveiling and new names are added each year. 40,000 of the Okinawan civilians killed had been drafted or impressed by the Japanese army and are often counted as combat deaths. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Military losses. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> American. The Americans suffered over 82,000 casualties, including non-battle casualties, psychiatric injuries, illnesses of whom over 12,500 were killed or missing. Battle deaths were 4,907 Navy, 4,675 Army, and 2,938 Marine Corps personnel. Several thousand personnel who died indirectly from wounds and other causes at a later date are not included in the total. The most famous American casualty was Lieutenant General Simone Bolivar Buckner, Jr., whose decision to attack the Japanese defenses head-on, although extremely costly in American lives, was ultimately successful. Four days from the closing of the campaign, Buckner was killed by Japanese artillery fire, which blew lethal slivers of coral into his body, while inspecting his troops at the front line. He was the highest-ranking U.S. officer to be killed by enemy fire during the Second World War. The day after Buckner was killed, Brigadier General Claudius Miller Easley was killed by Japanese machine gun fire. The famous war correspondent Ernie Pyle was also killed by Japanese machine gun fire on Ie Island Ie Shima, a small island just off of northwestern Okinawa. Aircraft losses over the three-month period were 768 U.S. planes, including those bombing the Kyushu airfields launching kamikazes. Combat losses were 458, and the other 310 were operational accidents. At sea, 368 Allied ships—including 120 amphibious craft—were damaged while another 36—including 15 amphibious ships and 12 destroyers—were sunk during the Okinawa campaign. The U.S. Navy's dead exceeded its wounded, with 4,907 killed and 4,874 wounded, primarily from kamikaze attacks. American personnel casualties included thousands of cases of mental breakdown. According to the account of the battle presented in Marine Corps Gazette, more mental health issues arose from the Battle of Okinawa than any other battle in the Pacific during World War II. The constant bombardment from artillery and mortars coupled with the high casualty rates led to a great deal of personnel coming down with combat fatigue. Additionally the rains caused mud that prevented tanks from moving and tracks from pulling out the dead, forcing marines who pride themselves on burying their dead in a proper and honorable manner to leave their comrades where they lay. This, coupled with thousands of bodies both friend and foe littering the entire island, created a scent you could nearly taste. Morale was dangerously low by the month of May and the state of discipline on a moral basis had a new low barometer for acceptable behavior. The ruthless atrocities by the Japanese throughout the war had already brought on an altered behavior deemed so by traditional standards by many Americans resulting in the desecration of Japanese remains, but the Japanese tactic of using the Okinawan people as human shields brought about a new aspect of terror and torment to the psychological capacity of the Americans. Medal of Honor recipients from Okinawa are Beauford T. Anderson, April 13 Richard E. Bush, April 16 Robert Eugene Bush, May 2 Henry A. Courtney Jr. May 14–15 Clarence B. Kraft, May 31 James L. Day, May 
Desmond Doss, April 29 to May 21. Topic: Japanese losses. The U.S. military estimates that 110,071 Japanese soldiers were killed during the battle. This total includes conscripted Okinawan civilians. A total of 7,401 Japanese regulars and 3,400 Okinawan conscripts surrendered or were captured during the battle. Additional Japanese and renegade Okinawans were captured or surrendered over the next few months, bringing the total to 16,346. This was the first battle in the Pacific War in which thousands of Japanese soldiers surrendered or were captured. Many of the prisoners were native Okinawans who had been pressed into service shortly before the battle, and were less imbued with the Imperial Japanese Army's no surrender doctrine. When the American forces occupied the island, many Japanese soldiers put on Okinawan clothing to avoid capture, and some Okinawans would come to the Americans' aid by offering to identify these mainland Japanese. The Japanese lost 16 combat vessels, including the super battleship Yamato. Post-war examination of Japanese records revealed that Japanese aircraft losses at Okinawa were far below often repeated U.S. estimates for the campaign. The number of conventional and kamikaze aircraft actually lost or expended by the 3rd, 5th, and 10th Air Fleets, combined with about 500 lost or expended by the Imperial Army at Okinawa, was roughly 1,430. The Allies destroyed 27 Japanese tanks and 743 artillery pieces including mortars, anti-tank and anti-aircraft guns, some of them eliminated by the naval and air bombardments but most knocked out by American counter-battery fire. <laughs> <laughs> Civilian losses, suicides, and atrocities Some of the other islands that saw major battles in World War II, such as Iwo Jima, were uninhabited or had been evacuated. Okinawa, by contrast, had a large indigenous civilian population. U.S. Army records from the planning phase of the operation make the assumption that Okinawa was home to about 300,000 civilians. According to various estimates, between a tenth and a third of them died during the battle, between 30,000 and 100,000. Okinawa Prefecture's estimate is over 100,000 losses, while the official U.S. Army count for the 82-day campaign is a total of 142,058 civilian casualties, including those killed by artillery fire, air attacks, and those pressed into service by the Imperial Japanese Army. During the battle, American soldiers found it difficult to distinguish civilians from soldiers. It became common for them to shoot at Okinawan houses, as one infantryman wrote. There was some return fire from a few of the houses, but the others were probably occupied by civilians, and we didn't care. It was a terrible thing not to distinguish between the enemy and women and children. Americans always had great compassion, especially for children. Now we fired indiscriminately. In its history of the war, the Okinawa Prefectural Peace Memorial Museum presents Okinawa as being caught between Japan and the United States. During the 1945 battle, the Imperial Japanese Army showed indifference to Okinawan's safety, and its soldiers even used civilians as human shields or just outright murdered them. The Japanese military confiscated food from the Okinawans and executed those who hid it, leading to mass starvation, and forced civilians out of their shelters. Japanese soldiers also killed about 1,000 people who spoke in the Okinawan language to suppress spying. The museum writes that some were blown apart by artillery shells, some finding themselves in a hopeless situation were driven to suicide, some died of starvation, some succumbed to malaria, while others fell victim to the retreating Japanese troops." With the impending Japanese defeat, civilians often committed mass suicide, urged on by the Japanese soldiers who told locals that victorious American soldiers would go on a rampage of killing and raping. Ryukyu Shimpo, one of the two major Okinawan newspapers, wrote in 2007, "...there are many Okinawans who have testified that the Japanese army directed them to commit suicide. There are also people who have testified that they were handed grenades by Japanese soldiers to blow themselves up." Thousands of civilians, having been induced by Japanese propaganda to believe that American soldiers were barbarians who committed horrible atrocities, killed their families and themselves to avoid capture. Some of them threw themselves and their family members from the southern cliffs where the Peace Museum now resides. Okinawans. 
were often surprised at the comparatively humane treatment they received from the American enemy. Islands of Discontent, Okinawan responses to Japanese and American power by Mark Selden notes that the Americans did not pursue a policy of torture, rape, and murder of civilians as Japanese military officials had warned. American military intelligence corps combat translators such as Teruto Subota managed to convince many civilians not to kill themselves. Survivors of the mass suicides blamed also the indoctrination of their education system of the time, in which the Okinawans were taught to become more Japanese than the Japanese, and were expected to prove it. Witnesses and historians reported that soldiers, mainly Japanese troops, raped Okinawan women during the battle. Rape by Japanese troops became common in June, after it became clear that the Imperial Japanese Army had been defeated. Marine Corps officials in Okinawa and Washington have said that they knew of no rapes by American personnel in Okinawa at the end of the war. There are, however, numerous credible testimony accounts which allege that a large number of rapes were committed by American forces during the battle. This includes claimed rape after trading sexual favors or even marrying Americans, such as the alleged incident in the village of Katsuyama, where civilians said they had formed a vigilante group to ambush and kill three black American soldiers whom they claimed would frequently rape the local girls there. <laughs> Next controversy There is ongoing disagreement between Okinawa's local government and Japan's national government over the role of the Japanese military in civilian mass suicides during the battle. In March 2007, the National Ministry of Education, Culture, Sports, Science and Technology advised textbook publishers to reword descriptions that the embattled Imperial Japanese Army forced civilians to kill themselves in the war to avoid being taken prisoner. Mext preferred descriptions that just say that civilians received hand grenades from the Japanese military. This move sparked widespread protests among Okinawans. In June 2007, the Okinawa Prefectural Assembly adopted a resolution stating, We strongly call on the national government to retract the instruction and to immediately restore the description in the textbooks so the truth of the Battle of Okinawa will be handed down correctly and a tragic war will never happen again. On September 29, 2007, about 110,000 people held the biggest political rally in the history of Okinawa to demand that MEXT retract its order to textbook publishers regarding revising the account of the civilian suicides. The resolution stated, It is an undeniable fact that the multiple suicides would not have occurred without the involvement of the Japanese military and any deletion of or revision to the descriptions is a denial and distortion of the many testimonies by those people who survived the incidents. In December 2007, Mext partially admitted the role of the Japanese military in civilian mass suicides. The ministry's textbook authorization council allowed the publishers to reinstate the reference that civilians were forced into mass suicides by the Japanese military, on condition it is placed in sufficient context. The council report stated, It can be said that from the viewpoint of the Okinawa residents, they were forced into the mass suicides. That was not enough for the survivors who said it is important for children today to know what really happened. The Nobel Prize winning author Kenzaburo O oh wrote a booklet which states that the mass suicide order was given by the military during the battle. He was sued by revisionists, including a wartime commander during the battle, who disputed this and wanted to stop publication of the booklet. At a court hearing, O oh testified, "...mass suicides were forced on Okinawa Islanders under Japan's hierarchical social structure that ran through the state of Japan, the Japanese armed forces and local garrisons." In March 2008, the Osaka Prefecture Court ruled in favor of O, oh, stating, it can be said the military was deeply involved in the mass suicides. The court recognized the military's involvement in the mass suicides and murder suicides, citing the testimony about the distribution of grenades for suicide by soldiers and the fact that mass suicides were not recorded on islands where the military was not stationed. In 2012, Korean Japanese director Park Soo Nam announced her work on the documentary Nuchigafu, Okinawan for Only If One Is Alive collecting living survivors' accounts to show the truth of history to many people, alleging that there were two types of orders for honorable deaths, one for residents to kill each other and the other for the military to kill all residents. 
In March 2013, Japanese textbook publisher Shimizu Shoin was permitted by MEX to publish the statements that, "...orders from Japanese soldiers led to Okinawans committing group suicide." And the Japanese army caused many tragedies in Okinawa, killing local civilians and forcing them to commit mass suicide. Topic: <laughs> Aftermath. 90% of the buildings on the island were destroyed, along with countless historical documents, artifacts, and cultural treasures, and the tropical landscape was turned into a vast field of mud, lead, decay, and maggots. The military value of Okinawa exceeded all hope. Okinawa provided a fleet anchorage, troop staging areas, and airfields in proximity to Japan. The U.S. cleared the surrounding waters of mines in Operation Zebra, occupied Okinawa, and set up the United States Civil Administration of the Ryukyu Islands, a form of military government, after the battle. In 2011, one official of the prefectural government told David Hurst of The Guardian, you have the Battle of Britain, in which your airmen protected the British people. We had the Battle of Okinawa, in which the exact opposite happened. The Japanese army not only starved the Okinawans but used them as human shields. That dark history is still present today, and Japan and the U.S. should study it before they decide what to do with next. Topic. Effect on the wider war Because the next major event following the Battle of Okinawa was the total surrender of Japan. The effect of this battle is more difficult to consider. Due to the surrender, the next anticipated series of battles, an invasion of the Japanese homeland, never occurred. Therefore, all military strategies on both sides which presupposed this apparently inevitable next development were immediately rendered moot. Some military historians believe that the Okinawa campaign led directly to the atomic bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, as a means of avoiding the planned ground invasion of the Japanese mainland. This view is explained by Victor Davis Hansen in his book Ripples of Battle. Because the Japanese on Okinawa were so fierce in their defense even when cut off, and without supplies, and because casualties were so appalling, many American strategists looked for an alternative means to subdue mainland Japan, other than a direct invasion. This means presented itself, with the advent of atomic bombs, which worked admirably in convincing the Japanese to sue for peace unconditionally, without American casualties. Meanwhile, many parties continued to debate the broader question of why Japan surrendered. Attributing the surrender to a number of possible reasons including, the atomic bombings, the Soviet invasion of Manchuria, and Japan's depleted resources. Topic. Memorial In 1995, the Okinawa government erected a memorial monument named the Cornerstone of Peace in Mabuni, the site of the last fighting in southeastern Okinawa. The memorial lists all the known names of those who died in the battle, civilian and military, Japanese and foreign. As of June 2008, it contains 240,734 names. Topic. Modern U.S. base Significant U.S. forces remain garrisoned on Okinawa as the United States forces Japan, which the Japanese government sees as an important guarantee of regional stability, and Kadena remains the largest U.S. air base in Asia. Local residents have protested against the size and presence of the base. See also 1945 Katsuyama killing incident Chiron Special Attack Peace Museum History of the Ryukius Joseph R. Sheets Rape during the occupation of Japan Suicide in Japan Okinawa Memorial Day Marine Corps Air Station Futenma Camp Hansen Torii Station Camp Schwab Camp Foster Camp Kinser Goretsu Kudatai Topic. References This article incorporates public domain material from websites or documents of the United States Army Center of Military History. Topic. Sources
Topic: Secondary sources. Topic: External links. Dyer, George Carroll, 1956. The Amphibians Came to Conquer: The Story of Admiral Richmond Kelly Turner. United States Government Printing Office. Archived from the original on May 21, 2011. Retrieved May 5, 2011. Huber, Thomas M. May 1990. Japan's Battle of Okinawa, April to June 1945. Leavenworth Papers. United States Army Command and General Staff College. Archived from the original on December 16, 2006. Retrieved November 20, 2006. A film clip. Footage from the National Archives, by SGT. Rhodes. Is available at the Internet Archive. A film clip. Landings on Okinawa, 9 April 1945, 1945. Is available at the Internet Archive. A film clip. Argentine admitted to World Parley, 3 May 1945, 1945. Is available at the Internet Archive. A film clip. Final Days of Struggle in Okinawa, 5 July 1945, 1945 is available at the Internet Archive U.S. Military on the Battle of Okinawa New Zealand account with reference to Operation Iceberg Cornerstone of Peace Okinawa Prefectural Peace Memorial Museum The Peace Learning Archive in Okinawa a photographic record of aircraft carrier HMS Indomitable, 1944-45, including Operation Iceberg, the attack on the Sakashimas World War II, Battle of Okinawa, slideshow by Life magazine Operation Iceberg Operational Documents Combined Arms Research Library, Fort Leavenworth, K's Oral History Interview with Mike Busha, a member of the 6th Marine Division during the Battle of Okinawa from the Veterans History Project at Central Connecticut State University Oral History Interview with Albert D'Amico, a Navy veteran who was aboard LST-278 during the landing at Okinawa from the Veterans History Project at Central Connecticut State University Booknotes Interview with Robert Leckie on Okinawa, The Last Battle of World War II, September 3, 1995